All right. Just like we set up this handler for update task, we're going to set up another one, an easier one even, for update work items, which I believe is what we just called it. We're going to get a bunch of work items, and we're simply going to say replace whatever work items we had in state with these new work items. Cool, let's run this. this task. Nice. All right. Last thing's last. Let's talk about how you can utilize this awesome real-time goodness. And uh, you don't even really need uh, ASP.NET Core app. Uh, you can uh, use Azure Functions and whatever bindings um, whatever bindings Azure, you can use through Azure Functions to kick off some kind of message sending. So, so far, everything we've seen so far is <clears throat> a client makes some kind of change and that sends a message to the server and the server sends a similar message back out to all the other clients. Um, and uh, we're going to use that same kind of concept here in a minute because I'm going to use the uh, HTTP uh, request bindings for, for uh, Azure Functions here, but you could you could kick off messages sent to clients on a timer or on like uh, you know through a queue, like something new shows up in a queue or some record added to a, a table, something like that. Whatever you can use in Azure Functions, um, you can use uh, to kick off your real-time awesomeness with um, with SignalR service. Um, and the just want to show you this slide real quick because I'm going to put in a little bit more client-side code that's going to look different than the rest, and that's because when you're using SignalR service with Azure Functions, um, instead of simply creating that connection and starting that connection with your hub, you're going to negotiate some connection information from the Azure Function, and then you're going to use that Azure you're going to use that information the Azure Function feeds back to you. Um, to create your persistent connection. That will all become clear in a moment. Right, what I just said. You're going to negotiate connection information, and then you're going to connect to SignalR service directly. Sweet. Last part. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I've got this sweet um, like Azure extension to VS Code which is gonna give me a quick way to create a new function app and function. No, 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 no. I just wanna do my thing here. We're gonna use C-sharp. Azure function app, we're going to add a function using the handy dandy tool whenever it decides to wake up. There we go. We're going to use the HTTP trigger. Anonymous. Very nice. Okay. A little bit more setup here, I'll go as fast as I can, but to make sure that this runs just fine locally, I'm going to edit this sort of uh, config file here. If 
It's also here that I'm going to, uh, while running this locally, I'm going to feed the connection string to the um, Azure function. We're going to use that same SignalR service we created before. Okay, we're ready to rock and roll now. Great. So we are to this uh, one CS file here, we're going to add a couple of functions, one for the negotiate piece, and then one for the, the last piece of functionality, of real-time functionality that we're going to add to our application, which is going to be, actually let's just kill this, which is going to be the delete uh, piece of it. All right, let's call this negotiate. Place this iLogger with SignalR connection info. We'll feed that hub name, which we'll invent here. Uh, task. Let's call it Azure Task Hub. What's the name? Bob. Uh, SignalR connection info. This one's really easy. We're just going to return the connection info. Don't need any of that. Let's replace this with signal our connection info. All right. Ah, yes. Uh, something appears to be amiss, and I can tell you one thing that's off is that uh, this. These classes aren't just built in Azure <coughs> functions. We need to actually make sure we install the extension where we can use the SignalR service. So to get a specific version here. Wait, are you installing this locally or in your Locally. Okay. Well, to the function app. To the function app. Yeah. We're adding a reference to this, to the function app. What happened to, uh, did, did we not just add SignalR service? Uh, it said something about not being able to find a version of something you were looking for. Did it really? Yeah, it keeps going on. Error. There was a restore. Did you, did you do restore? Oh, here we go. Okay, good, good catch. Yay. Okay, <clears throat> now our client can negotiate that connection info. <coughs> We're gonna go back to our client app in the task board and we are going to create the AZ hub connection. So I'm just, I happen to be using 
two connections here. Don't get too confused, but I just didn't want to have to take the time to you know convert everything over. So we're going to define a new method here. For the delete piece, it's going to use a different path, basically, uh, to get things done. Uh, and to make things a little more expedient, I'm just going to define a URL here. And we set that earlier to, uh, to that port. Okay, great. So, we're going to use the fetch API to make this call to the Azure function. JSON of that response. Then, with that response, which we'll call info, we're going to use that info that we just negotiated to then create our connection to the SignalR service. All right, and that looks a little something like this. We need to create some object, which I'll call options. to have an access token factory prop, which is a function which will simply return the access token on the info that was uh, given to us by the Azure function. We're going to use those options to create a connection using the Hub Connection Builder with the URL of the URL that was given to us by the Azure function, and we're going to use these options that we just created, and we're going to build that. Getting close, folks. Okay. Then, using our handy-dandy uh, connect-to-hub method we created before, we are going to to, we don't need to call anything back. It's just an empty function, doesn't it? Cool. We are now going to be connect, having clients connect, uh, negotiate connection information from the Azure function, use that information to connect to the SignalR service, and once we've done that, they will be able to delete things and have that deletion show up or happen also on the other clients. Define a route here as delete slash work item ID. This is a really easy way for us to get the work item ID out of the work item. ID will land here, and then we need SignalR to do our work. Same hub name we used before. All right, so if I start using stuff that you don't recognize, hey, I don't recognize it either. I don't know what an IA sync collector is, but I can show you how to use SignalR service 
using an Azure function, damn it. You're all going to learn. I'm going to learn too. All right? So basically, we have a collection of SignalR messages. We'll just call it messages. And we're going to return Did I not? Oh, I called it messages. I'm going to add a message of type signal alarm message. Or it's expecting a signal alarm message, excuse me. And that message is going to have a target of this is the this is the function we want to call on the client, which we have not yet defined. And I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, but Andrew, all of these uh, messages, to the they're going to go to all clients. I'm like, yeah, I know, it sucks. But, uh, you know, if I wanted to add the ability in an Azure function to send a message only to certain clients, um, that would mean, uh, first of all, a longer demo. But also, um, on when we had the ASP.NET Core application, it was, it was identifying clients by the connection ID out of the context, can't get that from an Azure function. It can get, oh, I've been using way too much JavaScript. Um, you would need to have clients authenticate and then use something unique about their, um, you know, some kind of token or what have you to identify users to put them in groups. You can put users in groups. In fact, that's relatively new. You'll notice we're using a preview feature of, of uh, the SignalR like, uh, extension to, um, to Azure Function. Um, so they're coming out with new stuff all the time. One of those relatively new things is being able to group clients. So you can do that. We're just not doing it right here. But it's not a big deal because we're going to send a delete message to all clients. And if the client doesn't happen to have the, um, the work item with the ID that we're specifying, no big deal. I'm just not going to delete anything. And why do I have this here? OK. Very good. All right, so we need our um, client to be able to handle the delete work item call. And that's an ID, right? Work. filter like we did before. And we're going to update the state. Great. But something needs to call that Azure function, that delete function, to kick this off. Um, so we're going to go down to a method called handle work item delete, where previously we were removing it from the list, just like you saw a moment ago. Uh, we don't need any of that. We're going to send a message to the Azure function. believe that is the route we defined and uh, we may need to make sure that we're using the delete method. Okay, let's stop this real quick. Let's start this. Make sure that starts without issue. Almost there team. So this Azure function is going to be running locally, where we're going to be referencing the SignalR service that's running in Azure. Coolio. Yeah. 